This is Kui Tran, owner of St. Louis restaurant Mai Li and Noodle House. The story of his family's journey to St. Louis is both terrible and beautiful. We're refugees of war. You know, my father spent half of his life fighting for freedom. I'm here because, you know, of course, I'm, I was in Saudi Army. Saigon fell in 1975. I am staying in Vietnam, maybe they can kill me. You know, when you, people talk about life or death, like, at this point, they dropped everything, left everything. Some people left Vietnam by boat, but 50% they make it. Only 50% make it? Yeah. Of the people and that they, went on the boat? They yeah. die on the ocean. Die on the ocean. At night time, 107 people in the boat, get out of Vietnam. On the ocean, oh, I don't, I don't think I can make it. On these boats, people would die of starvation. They would die of suicide, you know, or the pirates would come. I couldn't see land anymore, and then they say, oh, no. Only water and uh, <laughs> sky, and water. Know. Water and sky. It's a bowl, you know. I don't think they can make it. And uh, we're six months old. A woman was going to kill herself, and she jumped into the ocean. And my father, he, he's made up in his mind he's seen enough death at this time in his life. Almost a half a million people died in the ocean. He literally jumped to save her. He jumped in the ocean to save this woman. She didn't want to be saved. And so my father looked at her and he was like, listen, my newborn son and my wife is on this boat. If I drown with you, they're going to be without a father and without a husband. You have to live. You know, I don't think we, we make it, but... Uh, you did. Yeah, I did. I'm both people. Reputed, yeah. And that's not even the most interesting part of the story. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a great meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world right here in St. Louis to find good food and experience other cultures. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart because food is love. Delicious. Food is love. Love your food. When you mention Vietnamese food in St. Louis, the conversation will eventually, if not immediately, turn to Mai Li. Mai Li is a literal trailblazer in regards to Vietnamese food here because it was the first. Famous for their pho, it can be tough to get a seat at Mai Li during peak hours, unless you happen to know someone. Good to see you, welcome. Kui runs things here these days, but like most people who are passionate about food, he learned the ropes from his mother. So this is where it all happens in here, right? So this is where it all happens. Here's the line. Mom's making some chicken feet to eat if you <laughs> Chicken feet? Yeah. You actually eat them? Sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> but you trim the nails. Yes. Trim the nail. OK. You can take one. <laughs> Try one. No, I mean, I'm sure I like it. Try one. Just eat it like this? Don't eat the bones. Leave that to the dog. Tasty, right? You're just good. throwing me in right off the bat, aren't you? I don't know, Mom was good. You <laughs> just have to walk in when it happens. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's tasty. They may be tasty, but I came here with something else in mind. So you're the one that started everything? Right, I am, yes. 1995. But you didn't start out doing Vietnamese cooking? No, only uh, Chinese and American. Okay. First of the year. Okay. And after a year, so I business not too good. And I think, yes, I, I think by myself, I say, we have to cook Vietnamese food. So after that, it's more, more business. So how did you end up in St. Louis? I, I came here because, because of so many Vietnamese people in the world you came and, and, you know, if some people go to the United States, they have to find a sponsor for fam this family. In, okay. In, yeah. That's why I'm here. So St. Louis has been good to you? Oh, yeah, the best. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm my dream, you know? <laughs> yeah. When we came here, we have nothing. I mean, like, no English for nothing. No money, no, no money, English, no English, nothing. You know. But uh, my son but, only six, no, one year old, right? Uh, about 18 months. 18 months, my living. son. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I'm very happy because I got out of Vietnam because, you know, under control communist. Because I was South Vietnamese Army. If I stay, maybe they, they kill me. That's why. But I'm very happy. I and my wife came here, worked very, very hard. 
but work hard, but I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Like you don't take anything for granted. You get the opportunity to work hard in another country and you actually have a chance of making it. That's what makes, makes yeah. it great here. Right, you know? right, we, yes. We, we, there is a lot of opportunity. That's why we came here, 85 Chef Restaurant. And Kui, he's still, you know, a little boy. He went, the, went around, around the table, you know. He uh, follow with my wife. He with me all the time. All the time. If he follow me, he, he becomes a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you follow her? Yeah, he cook. He good cook too. He good boy, yeah, he good. So you're still cooking today? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good cook. She would yeah. Cook. <laughs> well, you knew that from way back. She, mm -hmm. she, did she cook back in Vietnam for oh, you too? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So you knew she was really good I at know. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Show me. Show me how you you do it. You you do it. Okay. Yeah. The lettuce. Yeah. Then no, but I want no, you no, to no, show. No, no, no. You want you show him. You, you want me to do it? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You do your. All right. Your. I I want to see it. Okay. You know. All right. I, I do for you. No, em làm em ăn. Big eye. Nó coi em đấy nó làm. Okay. Uh -huh. like that. Okay. Wrap like that. Wrap like that and dip in the sauce. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Good. Vietnamese crepe. Yeah. What's the name of that in Vietnamese? Bánh xèo. Bánh xèo. Bánh xèo. Yeah, like Vietnamese pancake. <laughs> Look like it. Yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> we're lucky, yeah. But I'm happy too. Well, good food makes you happy. <laughs> and I'm very happy. Okay, thank you. That looks great. So the, the word pho comes from pot au feu, right, in French? French, yes. In Viet, but, uh, Vietnam, they call pho, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. P H O. There is some kind of yeah. spice. Yeah. I can, I can. T there, there is a, a spice in here that flavors it. Right. What is that like? Cinnamon. Like cinnamon. Yes. And Something like that. Oh, some, so many kinds you put in. Star <laughs> anise. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna have to try some Danish food soon. Oh yeah. I'll have to hook you up. <laughs> later, later. You don't, you don't know what that is, do no. you? No. Never. See, you see how important it is that we have these conversations because oh, yeah. I might be able to introduce you to something where you're going to go, wow, that's that is good. really good. I, I, I okay, that's good. I'm completely overfed. My Lee is everything I've heard about and more, but I bothered them here long enough. Kui has come to take me to his ramen restaurant, Nudo House, to see how he makes stocks for pho and ramen. Growing up in the industry, I pretty much like, I resented the restaurant. Mm. And people look at me now and they're like, oh, that, it doesn't seem that way. But you know, you know how it is. I mean, yeah. I never went on spring break. I don't even know to this day what that even means. You know what I mean? So it's like, I've always, I always worked. We couldn't afford a babysitter, so I worked did homework and wash dishes. I mean, that's my that was my life in a nutshell. And I mean, I never like we never I never had sleepovers. I never did the stuff that kids did. You know, I resented it for a long time and then my mother got sick. I would say, I don't know, 99. She you know, she overworked herself and you know, a lot of stuff happened and it it kind of forced me to come back really. During that time it became it got exciting because starting 99, 2000 you had chefs coming in, opening restaurants, doing other things in St. Louis. And so, you know, for me, it was neat because they would come by, they would come in, they would talk to me and they would be like, hey, I'm such and such and we love your food here. And, you know, I just learned that so many people have grown up at this restaurant, you know, and it, it, then it got a little bit more personal. Yeah. And for me, I was like, you know what? We need to really do something. We need to up our game a little bit. You know, and, and so I was like, you know, I I love what mom's doing as the food, but I want to put a wine list together. I want to make it a full-fledged restaurant. You know, I want to make it, you know, a little bit different than what other people were doing here. Other, you know, Vietnamese restaurants were doing here in St. Louis. And that was kind of like the vision I had moving forward. And so moving the restaurant to the new location, 90% uh, of my friends were like, are you sure, man? You know, they weren't even sure. Yeah. Because they're like, listen, I know you're, you know, doing well as a restaurateur and stuff like that, but I don't know. And I was like, you know what? I don't know either. In the old location, 
here to there is not even, it's barely 10 minutes. I mean, it's a five minute drive. So you're looking, this is the old restaurant since 1984. Wow. So when we first started, it was literally this side. It was only this side. When we say it's a hole in the wall, yeah. it was a hole in the wall. You go into that place, you go into that hole in the wall, you order, uh. and then you sit down <laughs> and we bring it out. Next door was an old copying place. 10 years into the business, they moved out and then we took the space over. So okay. then we expanded to this whole space, which comes out to be, I think about 2,000 square feet. But I mean, it's, you know, oh, it's open. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it is open. Holy cow. Huh. How about that? Are we trespassing? We are, but it's okay. Okay. Holy. Let me tell you something. This is crazy. I haven't been in here in 10 years. Wow. Wow. So when we left, holy cow, like this is a very like, I'm getting like goosebumps. I haven't been in this building in 10 years. This is the first time I've been back inside. Like I've driven past, but I've never been inside of this. I'm gonna have to take pictures myself, but yes, yeah, so wow, holy cow. This is, <laughs> so we redid this whole thing and the hole was here. Wow. The hole was here, so you come in and order and you know, I mean, like you could end up sitting at the counter, the, the cash register was here. I mean, this was, the cash register was back here and you could just order. Holy cow, this is crazy. But for 25 years we were here. So yeah, we did a little remodeling, but uh, this is crazy. This is where I grew up, Chef. Wow. You know? 25 years. I can't believe the door was open. I couldn't, I was like, whoa. I looked, I was like, is that door open? And I was like, it is open. So I mean, look at this. This is, you know, the walk-in cooler was here. So the hood was there. We just, cra we cranked it out. And crazy thing was, you know, to take out the trash, you have to go down the stairs. <laughs> you go down the stairs and Oh, that was a nightmare. I haven't been into this space mm. over 10 years. Wow. We left here November 2009. So that was the last time I was here. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that door is open. So it's a lot of memories here. Look at those murals. It opened as a Chinese restaurant because that's what was selling. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, okay, we're gonna do Chinese food, but how do you distinguish yourself? How do you distinguish yourself as a Chinese restaurant? So at that time, mom goes, well, we're Vietnamese. Why don't we sell Vietnamese food? So we started with like, you know, a six item menu of Vietnamese food. And, you know, in 86, we started to build upon it. And then in 87, a man named Joe Pollock, he was the St. Louis Post-Dispatch food critic. He came in and he ate and then he wrote an article, a review, saying, I've never had Vietnamese food before in my life, but everybody should get down here and eat it because it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, it's noodle soups and all these herbs and, you know, whatever. I, I've never had anything like it. And so from there, the rest is history. This is great. This is great. I, yeah. I haven't walked in here in over 10 years. I can't believe that door is even open. Well, it was meant to be. You know? It was meant to be. Yeah. You're meant to be. Well, it's because of you. I, I thank you for, because uh, if we're not, if I'm not with you today, I don't uh, walk into this place I left over 10 years ago. You know, my whole childhood was here. Everything. I picked up a walk at the age of 12. I cooked my first dish here, you know. Well, come on, let's, uh, All right. let's get leave before we get in trouble. <laughs> Can you believe this place was open? Dude, I haven't been here. I like literally had goosebumps. Just down the road from the old Miley, also on Delmar is Nudo House. Quiz answer to authentic ramen in St. Louis. I took you to the original mm -hmm. of my lease where, we, where it all started. So 35 years later, I'm back on Delmar on a street that I, as a kid, rode my bike up and down, passing out menus. We started on Delmar. Now I'm back on Delmar. It's kind of like, Came full circle. It's it's crazy. You you were you had my lease, and now you're you're gonna try to uh, sell noodles in St. Louis. <laughs> so what 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 happened? We went to this place called Santuka, right at the Mitsua Marketplace in Chicago. So we go there and we order this bowl of shio ramen, which is a salt ramen. Okay. And I've never had anything like that before. So I eat it, and I'm like, holy cow, this is like so good. 
And then we're sitting there eating, and I'm with my wife, and any good idea I've ever had has really come from her. Because I go, man, I wonder why no one in St. Louis is doing this. And she goes, why don't you do it? Like yes. she's seeing, she's seeing that I can do it rather than me like, hey, how come no one else is doing this? You know, this, yeah. this is great. Someone should do it. And she goes, you should do it. And I was like, hmm. And then we just kind of from there got in touch with uh, Chef Nakamura because I was doing all this research and I was like, okay, who can help us take what we're doing to this level? Like if I don't give people what, you know, the same feeling from my leaves and I'm a complete failure. Literally six months, four phone, four to five to six phone calls a week. And I'm literally hounding this guy. And so one day I call back, and this was on the sixth month, and I said, hey, listen, I know who Chef Nakamura is. I have to see him. Three days later, I get a phone call and from this weird number, and I was like, Oh my God, is this him? And so I'm at the D, I'm at the <laughs> license office renewing my license, and you know how long that takes. <laughs> yeah. So I finally, I went from like number 100 to uh, finally it's my next place in line, the phone rings. <laughs> uh, right? That's the universe, yeah. you know, that's the universe telling me, do I renew my license after being here for an hour and a half, or do I take this call? So I literally take the call, and it was Chef Nakamura. From that point on, we've created this incredible relationship. Awesome. You know, not just mentor, but, you know, as a friend. So now you're driving without a license. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to ramen stock, pork yeah. stock. Here we go. Great stock takes time and attention, and Kui uses no shortcuts to get there. No, you make shortcuts, you know, the, the, you it's going to taste, taste it. you can taste Correct. the shortcuts. Boiling the bones to clean them first, and doing a second pass to inject deep flavor into his soup stocks. This is a craft that seems simple, but it's like an art form to execute correctly. People really need to understand how tedious it is to make oh. these things. There's so much love going into these things, it's unbelievable. That that's a big part why his pho was featured in Food & Wine magazine. Taking what he learned from his mother growing up in Mai Li and combining it with personal training from a world ramen master. Kui has created a unique experience in flavors here. Wow. Adding an exciting chapter to the St. Louis food scene. How good is that? That's unbelievable. This is what I was bred to do. Yeah. Because I genuinely I genuinely love the community. Like, I like people, you know, and I appreciate everyone coming in, uh, spending their hard-earned money with me, or spending the time, you know, their kids' birthdays. I mean, 12-year-old kids, they could go to Chuck E. Cheese, but they want a tofu and lemongrass dish from my Lee's, you know? I'm like, this is insane. Yeah. But it's such a beautiful thing because that's what food does. In St. Louis, you know, I'm proud of the food community here. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we're at the point now where you can say, St. Louis will stand up to just about any other city. I mean, we have everything here. Yeah, I'm listen, I'm I'm pro St. Louis. This is my city. Yeah. You know, I grew up here. I live here. I built a business and, you know, establishments here and I will always represent St. Louis, you know, the best way I can. I mean, I, I don't know if you are, but I'm like a cockroach. I'm kind of hard to kill. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, still, I'm yeah. still scurrying along. Yeah. You know. know what I mean? Even though I'm not up on that shelf, I'm on yeah. the floor, you know. You, but, you constantly have to adapt. You know, it's, it's brutal. And, and again, we talk about the community, right? So the last few days, I've talked to so many friends in the restaurant industry, and everybody has the same, I don't know what to do. And, you know, and we're trying to call each other for encouragement and, you know, uh, just some help. And, you know, the tough thing right now is usually where I'm a ball of energy and this and that, and I'm like, there's not, I don't know what to do myself. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing we can do, you know? And, and the only thing that I find comforting is the support. And obviously, I mean, it's not really comforting that everyone's in the same boat, but, it's just we're we're all trying to figure out how to manage. Yeah. Because this year is a loss. You but know? when you think about it, when you say it's uh, we're all in the same boat, 
We are on that raft now. Yes. All of us. And if somebody jumps over, we're yeah. going to save them. We're, we're going to have to You're go right. and save that's, them. That's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. You know, because we're feeding each other staff. We can help. We're going to help. Yeah. And so it's just, um, uh, it's a tough time right now. But yeah, I mean, like that's. I think that's the one love I have. Only the restaurant people are giving to the hospitals giving to whomever they can. And if food's going bad, we're donating it to the food banks. Yeah. You know, or like you see all these restaurants that are dying, but they're like, hey, this food's gonna go bad. You know, if you're an industry person or whatever, they're cooking and putting food outside in the sidewalk for the community. We've always found a way to help everyone else. And so for me, that's why I'm out there saying that, hey, listen, support local. Mm -hmm. You know, they need you, I need you, we need you more than ever. Maybe, you know, with this pandemic, maybe that's the silver lining is that we're gonna have to learn that the only way forward is to help each other. You know, we should just, we should just, if we really wanna fix the divisiveness in our country, we should just say, hey, you guys should just work for free a few days at our restaurants and yeah. then we could just put everybody together and be like, you know, us screaming at them, hey, come on, I need that food, let's go. And then <laughs> yeah. you don't have time to, you know, argue about your differences because yeah. you just yeah. gotta get this food out. Oh, and remember the story about the woman Queen's dad saved? It was, I mean, it's an awful story, but it's a great story because he managed to save her. We get to whichever first refugee camp and at this time in the 70s, polio was rampant mm. all across the world, and yeah. especially Southeast Asia. We were in the refugee camps for two years, so I fell sick, and come to find out, I had polio. And most of the people that had polio at the time didn't survive. My parents were like, "He's gonna, our son's gonna die. You know, he's laying there, hasn't moved, didn't move for a whole day, right? I was just laying there, just luckily I was still breathing. By the grace of some higher being, the woman that my father saved, her brother ended up in the same refugee camp and he was a nurse. And she brought him to my parents. Somehow he found some penicillin. A day and a half later, I started wiggling my fingers. And you wanna talk about karma. Yeah. A life save saves another life, Yeah. right? And that's just- uh, So, so he, he was the brother of the woman. Of the woman that your dad saved. Yes. And to this day, they are incredible, they're great friends. Wow. And you know, her daughter, you know, she has children, her daughter got married, and she's married now, but you know, my parents went to their wedding. Wow, that's know, a, a few great years story. Back. And you know, and that's, that's the type of thing that has never changed, right? We need more compassion. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down and we need to care and help one another you know, rather than all this divisiveness, because that saved my life, yeah. right? And us being nice or, you know, helping someone could save someone else's life. Like thousands of other Vietnamese fleeing their country, Quy's parent boarded an overcrowded boat in the middle of the night and set out floating into the unknown. All the while, they were hoping to drift to a better and safer place. All of this bears a striking similarity to the state of the restaurant business these days. The COVID has forced small shops and large dining rooms alike into the same boat. A boat that has for many months now had no known destination. Restaurants, cooks, staff, everyone drifting and hopes of the industry finally landing on solid ground. When the relief of making it to the refugee camp was broken by an outbreak of polio, I'm sure Quee's parents must have felt a new low of hopelessness, out of the pot and into the pan, if you will. Still, even at the darkest point, hope was there. Their story proves that helping others will eventually come back to you. Kui was such an inspiration. I'm actually making a pho poached scallop today. Blistered tomatoes in here. So basically, I clarified that tomato broth just like he did. Some radish, put some greens up here as well. So I took this poached scallop and this is a little corn puree. It's just another example of how the St. Louis food scene is special. And food is love.
got extra gloves, Chef. I mean, you, you wouldn't want me to have a heart attack, do you? <laughs>